Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install an N20 map sensor or T map sensor on your N54 powered BMW. It is a 3.5 bar sensor. Let's get the hood popped and I'll show you where we're going to be working. Please excuse the dirty car and engine bay. I haven't had a chance to take it for a wash. Here is the N20 sensor. And if you look at the front of it, it will say 3.5, indicating that it is a 3.5 bar sensor off of an N20 or an S55 from the M3, F80 or F30 M3. The point of going to the sensor is so that you can run more than 18 PSI safely if you plan on running uh, a custom tune. The stock sensor on an N54 is a 2.5 bar sensor and once you get above around 19 or 20 PSI, you lose resolution, your accuracy drops. I'm planning on running a custom tune up to 22 PSI, hence the need for this sensor. So first things first, we're going to get into the charge pipe area over there and remove the stock sensor. I'd imagine the average person that's watching this is already gonna have DCI filters on their N54, but if anything, you may have to remove your stock air box if you wanna follow along, or just remove the rear filter. So I have an aftermarket charge pipe, but the location is the same regardless if you have a aftermarket charge pipe or a stock charge pipe. So in my case, there's normally a couple, I believe they're torque screws when you're stock. I have a couple Allen heads that I'm gonna remove now and I'll let you know what size. So I got a 2.5 mil Allen. There's a look at the stock sensor. That's good for two and a half bar. Next up, it's not a straight plug and play unless you buy a conversion harness. You can find that online if you just search for an N20 to N54 adapter harness. So we gotta flip the orientation for this to work. It's not the same. We have black, yellow, red, yellow, blue, and yellow. So this has to come here this has to come here, this has to go there. So we're flipping it as if we're just basically rotating like that. It's supposed to look like that when you're done. So we'll do one at a time. To do so, if you look here, you can see that there's a little place to stick the pick. Okay, we flip that up. Now we can start with the first connector. So you're gonna push from here. And then it'll pull out. So I'm gonna bring this yellow one over now. We'll just flip this to be over here before we mix anything up. We have a definite click. Now we'll bring this over here. Again, a defined click. Now we just gotta swap these two. So we got the blue, which is gonna be beside the yellow. Again, a nice defined click. And lastly, this one here. There you go. I heard four solid clicks. It's not going anywhere. They won't come out. So we'll close this back up. Easy enough. So now, everything's just flipped. I'm gonna bring the sensor into place. It plugs right in, but it doesn't click. There's no, no way for it to click. So we need to find a good way to secure that. 
So I don't have a very elegant solution for securing this since it doesn't click. It's a very, it's a tight fit though. It won't just come undone. It takes pressure because of that seal, but I'll have to just run some electrical tape around it. So if anybody's weary of this and thinks it's kind of ghetto, understood, consider the harness. So not the prettiest solution, but nobody will see it and it'll get the job done. Let's go ahead and insert the sensor into the pipe. I'm gonna slightly lubricate the O-ring. You don't want any of that grease getting on the sensor itself, that's for sure. All right, let's reinsert the screws. Okay, so we can't start the car on this. It wouldn't run right because it's made for a much wider PSI range. So we're gonna have to flash the car now. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. For now, I'll get the air filter put back in place and we'll go inside the car. So now we're in MHD. And I'm basically gonna flash back my same map, but I'm gonna tell it now that I have a 3.5 bar sensor, just in preparation for when I go to the following. So I purchased the M boost option to run higher PSI. As you can see, it says for self-tuning users that need to target more than 18.5 PSI, which I will be with a custom tune. But for now, we're just gonna leave things as they were. So we're gonna flash an MHD map. We're gonna flash version eight beta, I'm running the E50 stage two plus, and I already have the auto with the LPNM mod already flashed. It's contacting. Now we choose options. The right time is short since I already have this tune on here. So I got boost limit per gear and apply N20 sensor is installed. I haven't had selected that, I'm gonna do that now. And I'm gonna leave all the other options, cold start reduction, deactivate kick down, that's gonna stay. So just to make sure that that took options, it stayed there. So now we're gonna go back and write this. I have a healthy battery, so I'm not so worried about the battery charger, but you would always wanna make sure that you have a healthy battery before flashing. Let's turn the key off and on, and then we'll give it a start. Okay, first start with the new sensor. Runs exactly as it should, which is what we wanted to see. To answer the main question in the title of this video, do you need this sensor if you're tuned? Not necessarily. It depends on if you want to go with a custom tune or even if you're running a stage two plus tune and you just want to have that little bit of extra information. If you get close to 21 PSI, maybe it's a boost spike, etc. If you want to be able to actually get that information all the way up to 20 plus PSI, 22, 23 PSI, I believe is where things will start to fall off unless you build it into a custom map but regardless for me it's going to be so that i can safely run 22 psi and not be in the dark if it happens to shoot beyond 22. i want to target maybe 21 and a half or 22 psi and if it starts to read 22 and a half then you know we can just set limits and have the ecu be getting accurate information not no longer limited by this sensor so that's the main reason people run n20 sensors on their and 54 motor, it's when they're running higher boost. Not required, doesn't hurt, not a bad idea if you're changing it for maintenance anyway. And yeah, I'm partnering up with uh, ECS Tuning. Um, so if you wanna support the channel, I'm gonna put a link in the description as to where you can buy this sensor. I'm gonna be posting a follow-up video describing what M Boost is and loading that custom tune to see what kind of difference it makes. Uh, but for now, uh, thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing. I upload regularly.
Thank you.